Good morning, morning guys. Morning. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're well. Happy Saturday, isn't it brilliant? I'm, Blue skies in and outdoors. So today, <laughs> though, we're talking about home and away, how to keep your home ready for viewings while you're on your summer holiday. That's a tricky one, isn't it, gals? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I mean, certainly what you see is with the summer holiday season's fast approaching, you're probably looking forward to getting some sunshine and some time away and having a rest and exploring somewhere new, aren't you? That's the, the fun of a holiday. But as well as a chance to escape, relax and recharge, holidays can be a brilliant and convenient time for your home to be on the market. What do you think about that, girls? Well, yeah, I, I mean, yep, sorry, go on, Andrea. Uh, no, <laughs> I was just going to say that sometimes people will use their holiday time to go and look at properties in a different area. So it is, it's the ideal opportunity to, to mm -hmm. capture that audience. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's a great time as well for when you're tidying up, isn't it? So when you're tidying the house, as we're saying about keeping things tidy and organised when you're you're away, it's the one time of the year everyone always does it, don't we? I mean, I certainly know I do. You totally yeah. clean the house from top to bottom before you go on holiday because you don't want to come home to a mess and all the laundry that you bring back with you. <laughs> yes, so exactly. You've got that, enough to do. Yeah, well, it's the one time that you keep it tidy, isn't it? It lasts a long time as well when it's tidy. And, your agent, when you're away, um, can bring a buyer at any moment without interrupting your daily life or schedule, which is a great thing, because sometimes we find that's a bit of a challenge, isn't it, for our clients trying to fit into their schedule? Yeah. You find that, Anne-Marie, when you're booking appointments uh, for viewings? Yeah, yes, of course, yeah. Um, yeah, so they, they it's, it's a good time, you know, the place is empty, um, and we could just walk around, and it's, it's, um, it's just like a blank canvas. There's no one interrupting, um, you know, the, it, it, and it's neat and tidy all the time and they don't have to worry about having mm. to clean up every time they're going to get a view and it's actually there already ready for exactly. you exactly it's great isn't it but homes and gardens look their absolute best in the summer as well though don't they so i think that's important you know we lose out on a couple of valuable weeks if we don't utilize that summer break time um, and with the demand for property in fife as we've seen um still riding high uh, let's look at how you can keep your home working towards a sale while you enjoy some time off in the sunshine so, Andrea, do you want to cover the first point? Yeah, okay. So, firstly, I want to help the air stay fresh. So, freshly cut flowers look and smell fabulous, but they're not likely to, you know, last two weeks while you're yeah. on holiday. <laughs> no one is worried. No worry. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can still keep the air fresh, though, in your home if you follow the following tips. So, lock your windows in the ventilation position to ensure natural airflow every day. And in the place of flowers, you could opt for a summer fragrance, um, sort of like reed diffusers or naturally scented candles. Mm -hmm. And one of the other things is a lot of people when they go to view a house, they will open the fridge. If, it's a, if, <laughs> if it is a built-in fridge, they will open yeah. it to see what they're maybe going to get. And I don't mean by the food. So, <laughs> But they like to see how big it is, don't you? Yeah, yeah, they they do. that. You they want do. to see it's quite roomy as well, don't you? And whether the freezer's on the top half or the bottom half, because yeah. these yeah. things make a difference. So clear your fridge out, have the vegetable rack and fruit bowls and anything like that that's likely to go off. Um, put them away, give them to your neighbour if they're going to go out. Um, and then you put the recycling, the rubbish and everything all the way out of the house. So... Mm -hmm. um, uh, buyers do remember how your house smells absolutely and, yeah, you can fill them either with positive memories yeah. or it can put them right off well it can can't it and i've, I've done that myself and it, you see the adverts for febreze and everything and there's some yeah. other brands out there by the way but you do you see the adverts for them <laughs> don't you? And it's like when you're in your own home you get a bit nose blind don't you nose i mean blind. i certainly know that um one of the things that's that we've not spoke about that i actually have done it is my son that did this he's a bit of a since he's got his own apartment he's a bit of a clean freak and it's quite surprising because <laughs> when he lived at home he certainly was not tidy <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things that he does which i think is really brilliant in the kitchen is you know how you get like the fabulous sprays and things like that is after he's done his washing up and things he just sprays that around the basin and it smells the room out all evening but also what he does is you know how you get like the lenore drying cloth that you put in your tumble yeah. dryer Yes. One of the things yeah. that he's done is actually, you know, in the tops of your radiators where you get like the gaps, is yeah. actually to fold one down in the side of those gaps. And when like, oh. they heat up, obviously in the summertime, they're not they're not on, but the heat in a home when it's locked up for the summer, when you're away maybe for those two weeks, will generate heat in the house. And that actually the scent comes off the little cloths as well. And they last quite a long time. So there's economical ways of doing it as well. It doesn't need to be expensive, yeah. confusing, things like that. But nipped down to home yeah. bargains, you get quite a lot in there for, yeah. for don't you? 
That's a you brilliant put, tip, Terry. <laughs> you can put yeah. those um, uh, scented sheets in just inside your vacuum cleaner as well. Yes. So it'll blow out the nice scent mm -hmm. as well. And that's a thing as well. And that's a really good top tip, actually, Andrea, because one of the things as well, especially if you have pets, um, I mean, I have a dog, you have as well, Andrea, and sometimes mm -hmm. the hoover can get a little bit doggy. And when you put it on, you know, the house smells great and then you start to hoover and then actually the hoover is making the smell, isn't it? So <laughs> those little things are, are good to be in there. Yeah. Any other top tips, Anne-Marie, for um, keeping the well, air fresh? Well, personally, I've got plugins everywhere. Um, I just like that smell as you come in through the door, you know, um, and it just hits you. It's nice. And as you say, anyone going to a property, you always remember what it smelled like. You know, even as agents, we're like, oh, yeah, that house. Oh, yeah, that house. You know, you'll, you'll, you, you remember the smells. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, the, the curb appeal as well. You know, when you approach the front door, the last thing you want to be right at the front door are the bins, the smelly bins. Yeah. 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 So yeah. That, that's important as well. Get your neighbor to maybe put them out. Um, mm. If it's very hot, don't leave them in the sun. Yeah. Not only that, I think the bin thing is a good comment, but actually, shoes as well how many times do we go into a property and you go straight into the vestibule and you've got the shoe rack especially in summertime when it's yeah. like all the kids trainers your trainers you've been out walking all day you've been out at the beach or whatever it doesn't matter how much freshness you've got in a property when you're on holiday i would i would shift those into a closet somewhere as well you don't need yeah. them at that moment yeah. in time when you're away so it'd be a good idea yeah. just to kind of have them out the way isn't it and keep yeah. the place tight well, absolutely yeah <laughs> even before you go away just um either wash them dry mm -hmm. them and then put them away because you don't want to come back and open your wardrobe and have smelly trainers yeah. sort of jumping yeah. out at you but you can put things like that in the freezer as well you put mm. them in a bag put them in the freezer if you've got room and yeah. it, stop, it kills the smell definitely it's a good idea yeah. so what else do we want to talk about i guess it's also we're talking about when you're in the house but it's getting access is a big thing for us isn't yeah. it of course it is so the second point i would say is make sure you sort your locks and keys out um, so if you are going away for your couple of weeks break in the summertime and you've got an agent that's doing your viewings for you, um, part of being an estate agent is holding keys, um, dealing with alarms, um, looking up, locking up properly and following the procedures that you want at your home. Um, for us, it's all in the day's work, but actually it's those little things that sometimes can be forgotten. And we've often done it ourselves and we get to a property and yes, we might know there's an, an alarm system. But, you know where is it what's the codes how do we keep that confidential C contain it for our client and obviously make sure that we access the properly the property in, in, in a timely manner um a property that we've sold recently um i must admit the first time i went there i was a little bit apprehensive because it had a inner door as well to the vegetable so when you went in the alarm didn't necessarily go off at that point but one of the instructions when you came out was to make sure that you'd lock that inner door because the letterbox if it blows open blows open the door inner which then obviously sets the alarm off so all of a sudden you've got all these little quirky things that you also mm -hmm. need to remember but it's really great to make sure that you've got your agent up to speed on all of that as well um and this is a we also carry out viewings when our clients are away so it's, it's great for us to be able to have that access and all we need from our clients really is a complete set of tested keys for your front door um a demo session from yourself is always really helpful i know that's not always possible so you know if you want to do that documented it's great um, and that particular property I was at as well, they actually had a couple of garages, there was an outhouse and there was multiple keys to the property. But what the client did was actually put the keys down and they were colour coded um, and then little notes what colour went with what, what key, which were then opened which yeah. facility. So really great if a client's organised like that, isn't it, Anne-Marie, when you're out Yeah, ab absolutely, absolutely. I went to a house the other day and it was, uh, I felt like a jailer, you know, there was the key, there was just, <laughs> there was just so many, but it was so good because when I looked at the bunch properly, it was back door front door conservatory door shed it was just brilliant because when those things aren't labeled you could be ages with your you know especially mm. when you're on a time limit on a viewing you haven't got time to be searching through keys and what fits what lock you know people are sort of standing around waiting so no it's a really good thing to get your get get you know for our clients to do that for us so it's just a lot easier mm. you know i yeah. think as well it, it ensures that we are actually able to then secure everything as well isn't it when you're kind of That's battling good. against it it could be easy to forget something but if you've got a robust system in place with with dedicated keys it does make things a little bit easier doesn't it yeah so, absolutely. so demoing how that works as well on setting and deactivating the alarm systems is a big thing um giving us your unique code which we would need obviously um and that allows us to be able to access the property safely but also give you confidence that the property is then secured again when we're finished which is a big yeah. thing isn't it 
um, access instructions for the garden, um, any garages, sheds, cabins at the moment, summer houses. <laughs> That's a big thing. <laughs> yeah. When anybody sees summer houses, they want to go in and look at it and see what space there is if it's coming with the property. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's really important to do that. And the gardens play such a big thing now, doesn't it? And especially now that so many people are working from home. Um, we're seeing people looking and using maybe the summer house as an office, haven't we? So yeah. again, it's great that they've got that access to that. Um, but again, before you hand your keys over, ask your agents how they protect them. That's really important. Um, they should be coded. So, I mean, we code all of our keys. Yeah. Um, they don't have addresses on them. I mean, God forbid, you know, if an agent was out doing multiple viewings and then left a set of keys behind or something and you, they're tagged with an address on, I mean, that's an absolute no-no. Mm -hmm. You've got to protect yeah. the security of the property. So, you know, they're coded, but they're coded in a specific way that we know it's that property without an address being there. They're stored in a lockable cabinet. Again, yep. your estate agent must have that to make sure that they're um, secure. Um, and also that they're away from the public eye and that people don't appreciate that there's obviously keys in the premises. Um, that's, a, that's a big thing, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. They, I they think one of the other them. thing, yeah, I think one of the other things that we need to make clear to people is that we would never say to any viewers, oh, the, the, the owner's on holiday, because you have to always remember the, the safety of the house, the protection yeah. of it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that is our responsibility. Yeah, really? yeah, definitely. You've got to be mindful of that. That's something I'd never mention. You know, well, where are the vendors? You know, um, they're, they're, they're away, but they'll, they know we're doing the viewing, so they've made themselves scarce. That's all I'd yeah. say. Yeah. yeah, we just say we've arranged access for certain days. We don't yeah. really, really get into that conversation, do we? But that's no. a really good point, Andrea, and it's, it's yeah. a good one to share. Um, so the third point that we're going to talk about, first impressions, that's a big thing, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, do you want to I mean, call this one, Anna Marie? Uh, yeah. Okay. So um, you know, even when you're happy on holiday, your home can maintain a sense of arrival. Um, so use our check. You know, we use our checklist um, below to serve a warm and welcome from the moment your viewers reach the front door to when they step inside. So um, it still has to have that warm, welcoming feeling, even if you're not there. You're on holiday, as we say. They don't actually know you're on holiday. Um, you know, like keep the curtains, blinds, internal doors open for an optimal flow of natural light. Um, I think that's really important, especially if you've got dual aspect as well. Yes. Um, or you maybe have a property where you, the viewing's happening on a certain day and it's not a bright sunny day like we've got today. Um, it's how do you get maximise that, that light in the property, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We've got a property at the moment that um, I always get there early because it's quite a big property. Get in there, open the blinds, you know, all, and when we leave as well, we, we leave the doors open just to a certain point so that they're not all closed up. And it really works. You know, you walk into the property and it's just the air's flowing nicely. It doesn't have that locked up um, feeling, you know. Um, so, yeah, as I said, you know, curtains, blinds, internal doors, um, just for the natural flow of light. Um, um, we, what we do as well, we would pick up the post as well from the door. Yeah. You don't want to walk into a viewing and there's like all these, you know, envelopes piled up on the door. Um, so we do that. If, if the... If, there isn't time because the viewers right behind you i would always say oh let me just get that out of the way you know um yeah it's dangerous as well you can slip so i always try and get those out of the way so they've got a clear way to you know when they go, come through the i door. think as well at the moment if there's you get the flyers for all the takeouts and things like yes. that you know and menus and what have you don't want to see that on the floor no. um, but secondly as well you know if, if the post's on the mat the address might be showing and that that's kind of confidential information as well you know we don't want anybody be, be able to see all that do we yeah no. yeah that's right mm -hmm. that's right so we mm -hmm. always always try to put them in a place where they're out of sight you know i'll pick them all up yeah. um you know a cupboard a drawer you know um anything like that um yeah um also um you know um water any pots you know hang in baskets and windows you know maybe get someone to water those for you when when, when you're away um i mean we're only there doing viewings but you know just to keep it looking sort of fresh outside mm -hmm. if it's external pots hanging um you know any I, think that, I think that's a really yeah. important one as well because at the yeah. moment unprecedented heat we're having just now aren't we in the next few days i'm quite not if i said this i'm actually on holiday this week and i told everyone this <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on holiday so yes, i'm quite you know. Know. <laughs> I'm quite enjoying the sunshine that we're having, but what I am noticing is how warm the house is. You know, even if I just nip out to the beach with Jock and then I'm coming home when the house has been locked up for just that hour and a half or so, then suddenly it's really, really warm. And again, if you're dog walking, do it first thing in the morning so it's not too hot for your little yeah. 
body frames. Yeah. That's, that's Did you hear about the five the five second rule? If you cannot keep your hand on tarmac or on the pavement for more than five seconds, it is too hot for your dog. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And at the end of the day, you know, he's not going to be coming to any harm if he doesn't get walked for one day. But no. Will if outside and peak peak heat. So anyway, we digress. But it's a, a <laughs> good thing. Though. But uh, certainly, yeah, I'm finding that the house is really warm. So you make a really good point there, Anne Marie, in making sure that the doors and windows are open and you're creating that airflow. Um, yeah. And I, I'm doing it actually, even when I'm out, is just putting it on that lock position where it's kind of the security of it, but it's just slightly mm -hmm. open. Yeah, so again, yeah, it's still in the position. Inside. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So you've got it in that ventilated position. You're right. Um, so the, the other big challenge, I guess, as well, is the kind of leaving everything neat and tidy. <laughs> how, do we, how do we achieve that, and, Andrea? Well, I don't think I've ever achieved that yet. So <laughs> but anyway, once you've found your flip flops and selected your swimwear and you've packed all your sun lotion and everything, there are some things that you can just quick go around, leave the kitchen and bathrooms clean, sparkling. Um, with nice products on display. Don't leave your sort of half empty shampoo lying in the bottom of the bath. Um, Actually, that's a really good point. And that's something that we see when we go to viewings or when a photographer goes out, um, you'll, you'll get that in the bathrooms, won't you? You'll see all, I know that house is lived in and you want it to be that way. Um, and people, when they're coming to view your house, they want to see that it's a, it's a lived in home. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not too clinical but things like that like half jars of like hand wash and lotions and potions they are a bit of a no-no aren't they yeah definitely it's too yeah. personal no one really wants to see that no. <laughs> really. yeah and i mean you're trying to make an impression as well you know yeah. yes you want people to say it's a home and it's lived in and it's not a, a show home but you know there are balance, boundaries it? as to what is acceptable to, yeah. to leave on show. Um, so how, and, how, would you, how would you overcome that then, Andrea? How would you prepare a home for that? Would you kind of have a, a special box that you could put everything in? Are we quick? Yeah, throw in easily. And if you've got on? cupboard space, if not, I mean, you might have might be a two car family. Put the stuff you're not needing in your car. <laughs> Just put it in black bags. Put it in the car. Hide it in the boot. Mm. Um, while you go away on your holiday with your other car. Um, or just you know just hide it in a shed if you've got a shed mm -hmm. um most people do actually prepare their houses pretty well for for sale yeah. anyway and yeah. you know they'll they'll buy that special set of towels just to have yes. neatly there and you know little ornaments and things that they buy mm -hmm. out of b and m and other well-known stores to make yeah. their houses look yeah. dressed but yeah no i mean i did it you know, if, I think everybody probably does it. But anyway, yeah, um, yeah the, the, things like toothpaste and that, just put them all away in the cupboard. Nobody needs to mm -hmm. see your toothbrushes and other things. So I think with the toothbrushes as well, you never want to leave your toothbrush out <laughs> just in case it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> an unwelcome visitor and your toothbrush gets used for something else. Yeah, exactly, because <laughs> you'd never know. You'd never know. <laughs> you be using it again. You no, sound like a Facebook reel there. You'll never know. You'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> I might make it into one. <laughs> anyway, in the living room, plump up your couch cushions, um, clear coffee tables and vacuum the floors. In the bedrooms, make the beds. Don't leave unmade beds. Um, just tidy up the dressing table and, you know, get any laundry into baskets mm -hmm. um, or, or put it into the washing machine and just leave it in the washing machine mm -hmm. and it's ready there when you come back. Yeah, I think um, that's a good thing as well. It's not only about keeping that tidiness as well, but laundry baskets, depending on what ones you have, you know, if you've got like the one, the, the plastic ones that have the holes in them and you've yeah. left a whole basket of laundry, perhaps, before you've been on holiday yeah, after two <laughs> weeks, that, that's going to be quite ripe. <laughs> so you want to be, be doing something about that. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> the, the next bit is children's toys. Now, it is, if you've got young a young family, they have loads of toys and it's impossible to hide everything away. So leave it neat, you mm. know, leave them in sets together. You know, if they've got like the cowboy town or the big red bus and things like that, mm. leave them together in one place and not scattered about um you just have I to be that, mindful that people that are coming to view the property might have children and they might want to see it and want to play with it so yeah that's um, a big challenge though isn't it with children because their their rooms are for to be creative and play in aren't they they're, they're yeah. meant to be for that function but um 
my son with, with uh, my grandson he's he's got some great ideas and he's got all these crates and so lego is the big thing isn't it oh, gosh, oh yeah when you, stand, <laughs> when you stand on a piece of lego oh my oh, goodness yeah. <laughs> that's that's so but anyway lego <laughs> is a big thing as well and and kids like creative play and colors and paints and all this kind of thing and i think having the crates are just fantastic because you can fill them up quite easily and just put them under the beds and i think that yeah. makes a, a big big difference for keeping things tidy doesn't it yeah yeah my son's 29 and still buries lego <laughs> yeah. Yeah. legos for all ages yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's therapeutic yeah yeah so also you have to think about your garden and leaving that tidy as well so mm. get set the garden furniture up um but if it's got cushions non-waterproof cushions and things on it put them away in storage um because you don't want them to get absolutely ruined no yeah, i think just leave it nice yeah i think that's a really good thing as well and you do want to leave the garden set up to because the garden as we've we all know now is people have spent so much time in them over the last couple of years with everything that's gone on haven't they and i think the yeah. garden's really important to show that it's an extension of the property isn't it and yeah like, functioning space and if you put everything away in a shed it's really difficult for some people to to visualize what potentially they could use the space for so mm -hmm. if you do have outside furniture it is great to keep it out but again it's about making sure as well that it's in good condition you know if it's previously if it's had a lot of years of use and maybe just giving it a quick varnish or something like that as well and just yeah. making it look yeah. nice coming isn't it and yeah you get so many beautiful things like big teacups that you can put on the table with flowers in and things like that as well ladies don't you which can yeah, make definitely. things really nice yeah. and just that splash of extra color and functionality that people want to see mm -hmm. isn't it yeah 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 how yeah. do you how are you managing with your garden andrea because i know you were doing quite a bit of work to yours well we have literally just had our conservatory roof replaced they got got it finished yesterday so oh, I've, got, I've got all that to um sort of get decorated Mm -hmm. um and at the moment that we're kind of in a wee challenge between the other half and me about what i want a nice wallpaper that's maybe got like big leaves and things on it we've yeah. got one mm -hmm. one wall mm -hmm. that we could wallpaper um and i think it would just make it just be like the garden coming in yeah so uh, i'm working on them it'll be he'll be, he'll be agreed by the end of the night <laughs> he doesn't know it yet though yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but yeah, how do you, how but, do you manage with outside space and and marie because i mean in your situation you don't have the garden piece but I mean, no not at the moment course, but, don't you? yeah that's right i mean before before i went where i am now i've always had a garden and um i'm i'm very much a garden person i mean you know uh, the hubby would be doing all the you know hard work the lawn, mowing the lawn and things but i do like to decorate a garden and i do believe as you said previously the garden is an extension of your house you know mm -hmm. nice table and chairs just a nice little finishing touches potted plants I love all that, you know, and, and on viewings as well, when, as you said, you know, when it's set up like that, people can see what they can do with a garden mm -hmm. as opposed mm -hmm. to just a blank canvas with just, you know, a monoblock, nothing else. Because <laughs> some people yeah. can't actually envisage, envisage what they can do. Not everyone can do that, you yeah. know. So, yeah, I, I, I love the outside space. Yeah, I do miss yeah. having a garden, actually, but yeah. I will get one one day, another one. Yeah. <laughs> I would say that, you know, it doesn't cost a lot of money to make... A little impression in the garden no, not you know i was wandering around garden center but yesterday and looking at little things and i think oh, that's absolutely amazing you know mm -hmm. but i didn't have the time to actually browse further and pick things that i really wanted but mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't you know you can do you can buy little cheap plastic pots you know and you can yeah. get little herbs put in them and you can do that for about 10 pounds mm -hmm. and even then just that a little on bit on the windowsill of herbs different herbs uh, you know can make such a big difference it can do and do you know what i love i aldi are fantastic for things like that you know when they do like their weekly specials yes. um, yeah the only thing is if you see something you like in there you can't go home and think about it because when you go back they never have it it's left, not there so you've no. just got to go with it but yeah. i actually purchased something last weekend and i put it up and oh i'll send you the video of it after ladies it's fantastic but basically what it is it's a a, a wind uh, turner and uh -huh. it's in the shape of uh, a peacock so oh. it's each, side, each side of it's got a peacock but then it's got it's a solar one so it's got like a light in the middle so when the wind's coming each side goes so it's like the peacock's feathers fluffing yeah. oh, yeah. oh but last night it, it was sounds really good 
Yeah, it was going like the clappers last night and the light was on and the light changes colours as well. And oh my oh. God, it was stunning. $14.99. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, send the video, period. Love to see that. Yeah. Oh, oh it's lovely. beautiful. So yeah, just saying, Andrea, it doesn't need to be expensive. No, no, no not at all. So I think yeah. setting the stage for your viewings not only helps you impress a buyer, but it also means by getting your garden nice. When you come back for your holiday and you're kind of on a high, maybe not so much because you're kind of coming home and you've had, you're relaxed, you've had a great time. The kind of going is always great. The coming back is always a bit of a, a sad moment, isn't it? But the great thing is you're you're looking forward to being at home, aren't you? And you can come home, you're feeling happy, your house is going to look great and the garden is going to look smashing as well. So it's a good way to end your holiday, all that preparation beforehand. And you never know if you've done that preparation beforehand as well and your agent's been able to get in there when you've been away. Maybe you've even sold your house when you've not even mm. been there, which is yeah. another good thing, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> That's true. yeah, yeah we've uh, done that, haven't we? Can I just, yeah. um, I've got a couple of comments here this morning. Angela uh, is saying good morning, guys. Good morning, Angela. Good morning, Angela. Um, hope you're enjoying the show. And we've also got a comment here from Zoe. Um, it's been frantically feeding and watering the roses at her front door to try and get them to bloom for more viewing. Zoe's house will be on the market very, very shortly. You can see the previews for it on our Five Properties channels. It's a fabulous uh, house over four storeys in Newborough um, at a very, very good price. So that is one to watch out for. Um, get in touch you're right so it is it, it's important to water them and i i'm doing a lot of that at night as well while it's a little bit cooler so that from first thing that they're they're getting a bit of a rejuvenation over the yeah. night which is great uh, and I missed a comment from earlier. Sorry, Ollie McIntosh. Jack McIntosh, go on, big lad. That must have been about <laughs> keeping this house tidy. Nice, <laughs> Thank you, Oliver. That was nice. <laughs> keeping your house fresh. <laughs> um, you can tell where they get their humour from, their dad, obviously. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so what, what's the other comment we want to do? Um, I think the fifth one really is about keeping a channel open. What, what do we mean by that, Andrea? Right. So we, we don't want to bother you unnecessarily while you're on your holidays and while you're away. So we have a plan, you know, so that we can get potential questions to you and get in touch with you. So things like, um, you know, if somebody wants to make an offer on your house, you know, if we can't get in touch with you, then they might just decide to go and put an offer in on another house you know you could end up losing out if we've not got that channel open so mm -hmm. you might not want to have your phones you might not be able to have your phones but being able to get you you know like whatsapp or facebook messenger some way or other to be able to keep in touch with you is mm -hmm. always quite a priority when you're away i agree with um, that and i think that's one of the things that we tend to do with with our clients is we set up whatsapp groups with all of the team and the clients so it's a really quick and easy way to be able to communicate isn't it and no matter where you are in the world whatsapp's going to work so you know you might not be able to phone someone and they might not be able to pick up emails but nine times out of ten people can pick up a whatsapp message and it's a yeah. really quick quick way to kind of get answers to questions and to get that communication across yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember a very quick story when I used to run my boarding cattery in Newborough that's no longer there anymore. Um, I was looking after a guinea pig, two guinea pigs for this little boy and they were away on holiday in Germany and one of them died. I got there one morning and the guinea pig was dead and I tried to phone, couldn't get through, send an email, send in messages, no, no, no. and then the other guinea pig got ill, still couldn't get through to them, had it at the vet and everything and uh, unfortunately it died as well. So. So what do I do with these guinea pigs? So I had to, had to put them in a freezer, unfortunately, <laughs> and keep them until because I didn't know what this little boy would want to do, or the parents would want to do with them. I couldn't just dispose of them. Mm -hmm. So they came back and he was so excited to see his guinea pigs. I thought, well, I've been trying to phone you. I said, I'm really sorry, but they've both passed away. Did all we could for them. But um, yeah, so it is really important. It's not going to be as tragic as that with your house, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it's really important to keep the channels open. Definitely. <laughs> not, not, not just that. I mean, the client might have questions, you know, they may have forgotten something or yeah. you know, want to communicate with us in, in regards to, to something. So again, it's a great way for them to be able to do that and not have to think about having to phone us or email us or yeah. what is our contact information. It's just a real clear channel of communication that can be done speedily as well isn't it yeah, yeah, yeah definitely yeah. we've been doing a lot of that lately because we, we have had a few of our clients on holiday at you know the time of the year of the year so yeah we have had to um 
to do that recently, you know, and the time difference, you've got to sort of, you know, plan mm -hmm. that as well. But as long as that yeah. panel is open, it's, you know, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Some of the other things, so, uh, that we would require from you is probably photographs of your recent utility bills in case viewers ask about running costs, even more important now that costs have yeah. gone up. Uh, we would also want to double check that we have up to date details of fixture and fittings that you're including in your sale. That's a, yeah, that's a really good one, actually, because yeah. someone will go to view a property and whilst it might not be described in the schedule, um, our sellers sometimes will, are quite happy to kind of leave certain items. Um, and I had that situation just last week as well when I was doing a viewing and people that have bought that property, um, it was it's a beautiful property and lots of character in there but there was a, a light shade for instance that was quite antique looking it was just absolutely stunning and they said you know nothing else in the house we would like except for that is it possible for us to have that so it was really great for me to be able to communicate quickly and um, because you know mm -hmm. little things can make a difference and actually that support and that relationship is getting built with built sorry with that communication isn't it and yeah great for your client to be able to give you a quick answer great for the buyer yeah. who's getting that quick result as well but yeah. it just shows efficiency in motion as well for how we're doing things isn't it mm -hmm. yeah yeah absolutely yeah, I mean, when i go to viewings they one of the main questions really is um are they leaving this are they leaving that Do you, you know that we, mm. we we need to sort of know these things quite quickly because that could mm -hmm. make or break them you know that could be whether they buy the property or not you know they make the quick enough they go on to mm -hmm. the next property so, they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, sometimes you've got maybe a, right, a nice light fitting that has maybe cost quite a few hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, and they think, oh, no, 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 we're not. We're not leaving that. We're not leaving that. I said, look, or the, the TV that's fixed onto the wall. No, yeah. no, no, we're not leaving that. I said, look, a minute, you're, you're maybe going to get 10,000, 20,000 more for your house. Go and buy another one. <laughs> Exactly. Just leave that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but sometimes I think they might have sentimental value to that. That's yeah. what I was just going to say. Yeah. Functionality is one thing, but sentiment is a different thing, isn't it? And in yeah. this particular situation, I wasn't sure if the sentiment would actually mean that they didn't, they wouldn't wish to do it. Mm. Um, they, they, they did in the end, but um, it was great just to have that quick communication. So you're right. I think having an understanding of what is being is remaining, because not only that, it's. Anne Marie and I sometimes won't be at the property through the kind of bringing it to market phase. We're mm -hmm. only there once we go to the viewing. So if it's not detailed mm -hmm. in the schedule, then we don't know. So it's really yeah. important that we get that information yeah. up front. It does make yeah. a difference. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think the reason that we never detail things in our schedules is because a lot of it can be left to negotiations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because that's another thing I do say. If I'm not sure if they're leaving or not, what, what I would say is, you know, um, any freestanding items um, are usually negotiable um, mm -hmm. on an offer. So that's something that, you know, we can we can look into, and uh, which is true, because they mm -hmm. may not have even mentioned it when they you know, bring in the house on the market. So that's another thing I say to people as well. Just tell the husband not to linger around the kitchen too long. <laughs> <laughs> they count as a freestanding option. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear so and um, some of the other things is we would need to reconfirm any prior time scales for the move because mm -hmm. you might get a viewer coming in and say look uh, yeah we're we're almost ready to move but we want to leave it till the end of the school year so our child can finish their school year and start again yeah. so again that you know these things are all negotiable depending on what the level of the offer is as well mm -hmm. um mm -hmm but we do need to be able to communicate fairly fast with yeah. that. Yeah. And I think there's, not only that, oh. there's... Oh, here good we go. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Hi, hey, folks, Hello. how are you? Hi, yeah. fine, 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 thanks. Good stuff. You're late. What time do you call this then? Trying to do this about the planes. Easy jet, <laughs> easy jet, not so easy. <laughs> So we're one Yay. now. Yay! Ooh! Who'd have thought that? I know. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that, Jim? Um, best community fundraiser, apparently. Apparently, that um, out of agents giving, which is part of the whole agency network in Britain, decided out of every single estate agent in Britain, we we were the best community fundraiser um, in terms of what we were doing and the engagement with our community and actually giving back to our community as well. So it's a pretty, I mean, for me, it's just like, well, I just do that every day anyway. So what does it matter? Um, whereas for them, it's like, 
oh my god you are to do something that no one else does mm -hmm. um way beyond what every other estate agent does in britain um and that's why you deserve the award so um, we'll just keep doing it i'm, I'm going up yeah. to the pump track after this <laughs> so <laughs> kenny has got the pump track there's uh, 250,000 to build a state-of-the-art pump track for bmx bikes and stuff like that um up in Kennewick. so that's live at 11 o'clock today that's going to be on and there's going to be bands and events and everything all the way through the day in the Kennewick um in Kennewick itself and um, so if anybody gets a chance go up and we'll be doing a live broadcast there around about just up to 11 o'clock um, right after this i'll be nipping up there mm -hmm. very good oh, congratulations again another yeah, door stop well, for the collection <laughs> well, I, yeah no, but i mean jim i know you're not really one for picking up trophies and you do it because it, it's in your heart and you want to kind of give back to your community and at the end of the day our clients help us do that don't they mm -hmm. mm. listen the only way just let me reiterate this the only way we can continue to contribute and give back to the community is because people endorse us and they also use us more importantly and that's where we get the money from all we're doing is taking the money they would normally pay for selling the house anyway and we're taking some of that money and we're actually putting it back into the communities that they're actually in so for example east nuke east nuke uses us a, a real lot so i mean we put about last well this year so far i think we put about five or six thousand in and um, but out of the thirty thousand we'll give away this year if east nuke's the biggest area then they'll get the biggest proportion of that thirty thousand if st andrews is the biggest area they'll get the biggest proportion of cooper or leaving or glen office or Concordy or dunfermline in the biggest areas but proportionally it will be split based on the amount of fees we we'll actually get from each area so if, if every one of them gave us the same proportionate amount that thirty thousand pound will be will be split between all these different communities in the same proportion to that um, mm -hmm. hopefully that'll make sense um mm -hmm. and that will go back to projects in these communities and events in these communities that otherwise probably wouldn't get that funding they need in order to do things um yeah probably a classic example they wouldn't have any singers or bands there today at the uh, pump track launch um unless we actually um, put money into that we put 500 into that um mm -hmm. to allow the bands and the singers to to be paid to come along and actually support the event and actually make it just make it that overall special event mm -hmm. um, the largo arts festival is another one we've just put into the now and that'll be starting this week the whole week um, and we put a thousand pound into that um mm -hmm. to for the largo arts festival um, and there's more and more all over the place but we do this consistently on a consistent uh, on all the time for that very reason um, so i know you've mentioned i know you mentioned a couple there jim but you know, and this is not what the show is about, but it'd be great for our community who maybe don't know this. What other charities or events or little businesses have we, we helped recently over the last maybe oh, six, seven uh, months? Trinity, Trinity Church um, did a, a fund for clothing for people in poverty in St Andrews. Would you believe people in poverty in St Andrews? But it does happen. So they did a fund for mm -hmm. that. So we gave them 500 to that. We had the Women's Wellbeing Club. Um, which is run by Sharon Munro, and um, we gave her another £500 towards that. And then we also gave another £500 towards other funds as well. £1,000 to the St Andrews Community Hub um, in St Andrews um, on the on the road as you go out. Um, that's a really important mm -hmm. project as well, which actually has the Community Hub, but also has the Food Bank um, linked onto that on, the, on inside yeah. the same premises. So it's, it's just all these different things we put into. Um, Silverburn Festival, you know, the one that went on recently, um yeah. uh, the one for raising funds for silverburn um we put uh, i think 500 into that and uh, we put another thousand into fife fest that's part of sponsorship but more importantly fife fest is in silverburn as well and it also supports silverburn and contributes towards silverburn so by being a sponsor mm -hmm. of that event um it actually gives us obviously exposure and um, it's one of these things that you just do as a normal business but we chose that because it's part of the silverburn project um, so all these different things i mean mm -hmm. you know we'll have a list somewhere on our websites um somewhere mm -hmm. uh, we, we do this yeah. I, I don't really i don't really i had to put it on because i felt that people would want to know more than anything but really i, I was i was loath to put it on because it's no like look what we give back to our community yeah. nothing well, like that. and that, that's not what it's about but, but having that list there though people might not actually know jim that those businesses or people require support so it's great for them to be on there it's a good way for us to advertise them yeah. as well isn't it it was like when i the series highland games who were like one of the main sponsors at series and when i was at the highland games and i was speaking to the chairman he said that actually they would not be able to do what they do without that funding that they get from their main sponsors yeah, yeah. because series highland game is a really important one we put a thousand yeah. into that 
who were also put a thousand into them the year before when they had the heavies because of lockdown. They could only do something up the back of um, um, the back of Dangerfield, you know, in the estate up there. I think it's the Montreva estate. Montreva, yeah. Um, so we put a thousand into them as well because they, you know these people um, come along to these events purposely for competition, and they'll only come along if they're actually a purse or something like that to to win. Um, and it, it's a lot of money, and it's a lot of money to put that that event on. So we mm. supported that event um, in lockdown last year um, mm. because because they wanted to do that, and we wanted to sustain the series Highland Games and uh, and keep it going. It's been going ever since they came back from the Battle of Bannockburn. Mm-hmm. Would you believe that? 1314, yep. the people of Ceres, was, mm-hmm. it was decreed by Robert the Bruce. 1314, they came back from the Battle of Bannockburn, and it was a celebration for the people coming back um, from the Battle of Bannockburn. That's what mm-hmm. it was all about. And it's been the Highland Games and has been running from ever since that time in Ceres. Um, mm-hmm. just, just let that sink in. Over 700 mm-hmm. years. Yeah, that's, been been awesome. that's generations of people. It's just mm-hmm. a, you know, it's just a, it's a real good privilege. It's a privilege, really, to be involved in them. Um, yes. And other projects as well. The Wave Project out in St Andrews was an important one because that's taking children from challenged backgrounds and actually helping them by, you know, taking them down. Rory takes them down to um, surf. Rory, sorry, takes them down to surf and learn to surf and stuff like that. But it's actually very successful in helping them relax and calm and de-stress mm-hmm. and uh, and just overcome anxiety. So it's the th- it's the projects that otherwise possibly wouldn't get funding from mainstream sources that we will specifically target because we know they're not going to happen without our help. And um, mm-hmm. you know everybody supports certain projects and that's great. And and we will now and again. Um, I think well, cancer research, no, dementia UK, uh, Alzheimer's UK. We actually supported through Penny because Penny did that eleven thousand miles walk from right. Britain. Um, and so we supported her and topped her up to the 100,000 level when it was near there. Um, plus, you know, we managed to get her put in the Old Coast Hotel um, for the night as well. It's just part of a thank you for raising so much money for mm-hmm. uh, Alzheimer's UK. And then we got Penny and Alzheimer's UK on a show and did a show all about them and did another fundraising exercise for them. Mm-hmm. So it's these sort of things that I think are important. I, I, to be honest, this is only the reason I do what I'm doing here. Mm-hmm. I've got no, I've got no desire to earn any more money, really. And I know that sounds daft, but how much do you need? Um, mm-hmm. but, you know, you only need. There's only so much money you can make, and all the rest is just for show. And I'm not a show person. I don't enjoy that. I, I would rather just somebody else needs it more than me, and I can make it. So why would I not make it and give it to them? So they yeah. can, they can't. And and that's the sort of it's been indoctrinated into me for the last thirty years from people far more successful than me. In the very beginning, when I first started, um, way before I started buying property, way before I started developing my career um, as a trainee accountant, these people actually mentored me and actually helped me and uh, and more or less did it all for free and said, mm-hmm. this is what they do. Um, I mean, they were opening orangutan sh- sanctuaries and stuff like that. And it's like mm-hmm. funding the whole thing. That's how big they were in terms of what their projects were doing. So I just, I just want to do the same. My swim mm-hmm. project will be coming back as well. And I want to see if I can resurrect that and the fact that we're going to see if I can get something in Fife done where um, every child could be able to, has the facility to be able to swim before they get to high school. Um, because apparently they don't do that in primary schools anymore. They don't actually swim. Uh, they don't teach them the swimming lessons anymore. Um, they have to go and get that themselves. So people that have, have not got that availability and not got that funding to do that, um, potentially they'll get lost, they'll lose out. And by mm-hmm. the time they get to high school, We've got another generation of children who actually can't swim, who put their life at risk when they go to the beach or the sea, especially mm-hmm. around the East and St Andrews and, and Leaven as well. Because yeah, which is behind me. <laughs> a big, big risk, yeah, there they go. There's a big, big risk for that. Um, mm-hmm. so, and I only found that out because we were doing the triathlon events. So again, teaming up with Triathlon Scotland possibly, and we'll take all the schools, the primary schools, the P6 and P7, and we'll let them try out triathlon for the first time. Um, in conjunction with Triathlon Scotland. So we did that in Cooper, it was very successful. We were about to do it with 440 people in leaving, and unfortunately lockdown came in and that put a spanner in the works for that. So this is all projects that we mm-hmm. want to get, I want to get back to, and I want to start doing mm-hmm. again and supporting again and supporting again, um, because the enthusiasm it comes through from children, um, um, and that's where we're targeting, um, and, and why we were helping them 
and their, their self-belief by getting them involved in triathlon and and just thinking wow i've, I've actually done a bit i've actually been doing triathlon because people hear the word and and they immediately say oh i can't do triathlon i hear it every time and i'm going well um, can you can you go on a bike yeah absolutely um, can you can you walk? Absolutely. Can you swim? Absolutely. Okay, so put the three of them together and you can do triathlon. Yeah. So where's the mental where's the mental block here? So mm-hmm. it's actually teaching the younger generation to lift the lid on on yeah. that, that 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 feeling that they've got and actually mm-hmm. understand how to go forward. Mm-hmm. MCR Pathways is another project I'm involved in just now, and I've just gone through Disclosure Scotland check and it's all fine. It should be. Um, I know that anyway. Um, so that's all fine. So I'll be paired up with a child and I'll be their mentor um, for the next two or three years, a child that's been in care um, and, and needs support um, because their results suggest that a child in care, um, um, if they don't have a mentor, they're probably 34% more likely to go into further education or find a job or training or anything like that. Um, if you in, introduce a mentor into that, it goes up to something like 70%. It doubles the chances for a child in care. And um, mm-hmm. so that's another thing I want to see and I want to pursue to see what happens with that and see if there's something I can add value to in their process and mm-hmm. actually help them grow and sustain it to a bigger model um, throughout the UK, because they are throughout the UK right now. So the school that I'm getting involved in is Glenwood High School um, over in Glen um, But there's other schools actually not um, put themselves forward yet. So Leibniz Academy has not put themselves forward, either as either as a Wade Academy. So there's all these different um, all these different schools that actually don't know about there is support for children that have actually are, are in care or are under a care banner um, in their school. There is support through MCR Pathways um, to have the funding, to have a mentor in place to help them. And somebody actually helps them through that process for the likelihood of increasing the chances for them to go in for further education or, mm-hmm. or, or work or training um, and mm-hmm. whatever that may be. Um, so mm-hmm. I think it's exciting times. You know, that's it is the, exciting, but I think the, the, the message that's really coming through for me with what you've said there, Jim, and I know some of it is monetary, but it's not about the monetary aspect or giving money. It's about raising that awareness as well, isn't it? And it's promoting that. And that's where I think the way that we use our social media and promote people yeah. that need our help and assistance and education or whatever it is on whatever topic. I think that's the yeah. biggest thing that actually what we do, isn't it? Here's two examples. Uh, so I went out to see um, Murray. Um, of Fife Joinery, and I went out to see uh, Michael Bond of the Charlton Estate at Charlton Golf Club in, uh, just uh, in Collinsborough. Now, I'd seen last week or the week before, they'd been building eco-lodges, and I went, whoa, that seems pretty fancy. I fancy a bit, find out more about that. Now, for me personally, it's just like something like I do, but then I more or less thought to myself, well, when I'm, when I'm interested in something, I kind of think there's other people out there interested in something as well. And if they are, if they are, they are. If they're not, they're not. Then fair enough. But so I, I went up and I did a video with them, and uh, and then I shared it with each new community. Um, I think it's really exciting at the very fact that they're building fourteen houses, they're creating jobs, and they're and putting um, mm-hmm. uh, more or less probably millions of pounds of investments. Charlton Golf Club's got to get built, rebuilt again after the fire they had in lockdown. Um, yeah. So that's got to get rebuilt again. So there's there's exciting times because Michael is the new generation. The next generation of the the, the Charlton estate and mm-hmm. family, and um, so there's exciting times happening there, and there's exciting things happening there, and it's what he wants to do, and I feel like that's something that the community needs to know, and um, yeah. so it is actually given time. Uh, the next one is I've still to put, and I'll put it on tomorrow. Is Chris from the RSPB um, was at the um, Bowhouse Market just last weekend. Now. I went round and I said, I'll probably be back to Chris and I'll do an interview with him. And I did an interview with him, it was six minutes. And it was about, what, why is the RSPB here in the East Nuke and along the coast? And he was telling me about the project of a certain type of bird that they're trying to encourage in the area. It's here just now, it's, it, it possibly is in, endangered. And, uh, and what they can do and what the people in the community can do to help that bird um, population grow and survive. Um, and actually look after because it's, it's it's all interconnected. And then what the RSPB does on a wider field and wider scale as well. I mean, you think it's all about birds, but actually it's about otters as well. And it's about other things that are engaging. And they've got Vane Farm, which is up in uh, um, uh, Loch Leven. And so Vane Farm's just off there on the other side of the road at Loch Leven. Um, and then that's an, that's an RSPB centre. 
Yeah. Um, so I, I might do something up there eventually, but I thought I would do something with Chris just now, just to see how people can support the RSPB, how people can find out more about what they do and what they're getting involved in now, rather mm -hmm. than just birds. Um, so that's another thing I've I've done um, that I'll continue to do. So it's all these different things. It's just it's mm -hmm. it's just me being inquisitive, really. It's um, it's like you would it's, it's genuinely like yourselves. You would probably say, you know, I wonder what's happening there. And most people aren't aren't uh, forthright enough to go, what's happening there? <laughs> <laughs> get, a micro, get a microphone out and go, what's happening there? You know what's going on, um, and, uh, and, sort of thing. and then get a camera out and then show the camera. It's like let's let's record this and find out what's going on. And and for me, it's um, if if I could if I could help one person um, be better for the next day or improve their life and the quality of life by what I do, then I've probably done my job. Um, and yeah. it's not really a job. It's uh, you get up every morning, and you'll do it for nothing because you enjoy doing it. And that, how could that be work? I kind of feel like a, a phony sometimes when, when people say, we'll pay you to sell our house. And it's like, fantastic, you're paying me as well. <laughs> but it's like, I just love doing it anyway. So you're giving me the privilege of doing it. And I know, and I do sit and say to some people, I know I have to earn money to sustain the system and all the rest of it, but I would really do this for nothing if, if there was nothing else to do, which is which is what my passion is and where it lies. And it ties in with everything else I'm doing. Um, mm -hmm. So other things on the horizon, possibly podcast with some more successful people, um, possibly from areas of backgrounds that have struggled before, and then finding out how, how how all of a sudden are you so successful at what you're doing? How did that happen, considering the background you were in? Um, so that's maybe one of the things I want to bring forward. Because um, I think overall for everybody, and, and every, every community, I think it's actually really good to have. So smaller scale of things like, um, if you've ever watched Stephen Bartlett's Diary of a CEO, yeah. um, kind of like that. Um, and maybe for property investors, you know, Diary of a Property Investor, another podcast series probably working on, maybe speak to some really successful property investors, come from really hard backgrounds. How on earth did you manage to succeed like this? And learning things like... Um, how did how were they how were they successful and what was it that made them a success? Um, because it can't have been the money because they never had that in the first place. So how did that come about and what did they do? Because I feel it'll inspire a next generation uh, mm -hmm. coming after us and after us and after us. Remember, this is all timeless content we're doing. So mm -hmm. I'm doing timeless content which will be here forever and in and, and years to come and in 50, 60, 100 years possibly even, I mean, these that, that same subject could be completely relevant. Look at the look at um, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. That was written in the early 1900s. And that is still the Bible when it comes to success and what people should, should read because it was all about Andrew Carnegie and how he built his empire as well as other people like Ford and Disney and, and all these people at the time who were extremely successful at what they did and the challenges they went through and how they overcame them. And what they did at that time, you know, the things are a wee bit different, but the, the, the principles are still exactly the same mm -hmm. as they are today. Mm -hmm. the thinking, the, 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 the overcoming the objections, the overcoming the obstacles, they're all exactly the same things and the way to do that and how to do that um, and how to influence your mind to do that and how to build your dream, because um, you're either pulled by your dreams or you're pushed by your circumstances. If you're neither, um, then you'll not do anything. Um, yeah, no you're just standing still, aren't you? Yeah, if, if you don't, if you don't, you'll never do anything. Um, mm -hmm. So you either have to be one or the other. So you either have to build yourself a dream and really what you really want. Um, and for some people, it's goal, some people, it's dream, some people, it's aspiration, some people, it's just something want to attain. Um, and, uh, and for other people, They've really got to be pushed by their circumstances. In other words, um, this is my only one shot. This is my last chance. Um, I don't want to be the nearly man or nearly woman. Um, and nearly did this and nearly did that. So these are all different podcasts as well. I'm kind of thinking I want to want to explore and take further forward. But we do that kind of wee bit on the Wealth Creation Show. And uh, in other shows as well, we'll have one-off people in, in the Sunday slots that we, mm -hmm. we used to do. And I do that now and again. So um, so let's see where it takes us, exciting mm -hmm. time. And it just so happens, you know, this is sort of the thing that um, keeps everything going and, and allows me the luxury to, to do that for other people. Um, so, you know, thank, I could only say thank you very much to all our customers out there for using us. Uh, thank you very much to all the tenants that actually stay with us because that provides income as well. It comes into the business. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you 
very much to the buyers and the sellers and the mortgages uh, all all arranged and the you know the solicitors that are, um, at work for us as well it's like all these different people come in and they build that whole thing so this doesn't this this thing isn't for me really this thing is a combination of everybody else that's involved with me like yourselves as well uh, have actually helped us to achieve this and help me achieve this but that's why it's got five properties written on it and it's not got jim parker because mm -hmm. no man is an island um you know uh, that's uh that's a well known saying um, True. um joe strummer you know joe strummer from the clash actually he has a foundation the strummer foundation and that's that's his tagline no man is an island um you 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 without people you are nothing that's the you know that's the sort of thing um you know that's that's his the, their tagline without people you're nothing um, it's all the moving parts that come together to make it happen isn't it that's how it's achieved absolutely mm -hmm. uh, anyway let's stop great there. so no that was really good for us to, yeah, to actually to yeah that. thanks <laughs> for coming so, in and hijacking our show <laughs> <laughs> you're totally fine so actually you know, we're right now so where we are right now well, we're, we're, at, finished. We're, at, we're almost at the end of it to be honest with you jim um, oh, wow. so we're at the kind of keeping channels open um, and we were just talking about the things that um, would aid us when our client is away on holiday. So, yeah. you know, s sending us photos of the utility bills, for instance, um, making sure that we understand what fixtures and fittings may or may not be included, because if they're away, yeah. we might not be able to communicate. Um, arranging a best contact, so whether that's a WhatsApp group, so we've talked about how we create WhatsApp groups with our clients, so it's a really good way, because wherever you are in the world, nine times out of ten, people can respond to WhatsApp quite quickly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also working into the time zones that they're in. So making sure we understand that. So are we communicating with them in the mornings or are we communicating with them in the evenings UK time um, to accommodate understanding of where we are and what needs to be done? And um, I, think the, I think the key here is um, if, if, if people follow that, then, you know, they can go away with the comfort. They can take this well-earned break and, mm -hmm. and they, don't, they don't need to concentrate on anything other than just their holiday. Um, and, exactly. all, and I keep saying to people, all you need to do is sign the, sign the documentation, give us the keys, let us do our job. One thing you don't do is interfere in the process because mm -hmm. this is a systematic process that works extremely well. And I know people out there, some people are really, you know, um, uh, what we call them, um, leaders. So they're, they're leaders and they're not used to other people taking over and taking control and leading the way forward. But you have to let the experts deal with it with the, the points in their field i mean i would never go out now and dream of actually trying to take photographs to replicate what yvonne does i would no. never try to go out and, and try to do the drone footage now that what dale does as well with me i mean i do some of the drone footage as well now but i work well with dale and roy and we put that all together and then we work all that as well and, and andrea takes a part in that as well so the drone footage has evolved from just me to another three other people involved in this um, this whole thing. So this this is a master class and, and all everybody's master at what they do. Um, the descriptions are done by somebody else that's individual and then it's all plated up so almost like the front counter of a Michelin star restaurant. And then it's presented to one of us, Perry, either yourself or myself, and then it's then it's actually we're the ones that decide, okay, we'll move that and we'll move this and we'll just we'll just put a wee bit more dressing on here and a wee bit more on here and it's and an, an, it's perfect. Right, let's mm -hmm. present it to the customer. Yeah. And then all we want to know is is it an accurate reflection of the description of the property? I don't want you to put your input into it because your input isn't what the respond or the public will respond to. And it's a more personal, it's a personalised view as well, isn't it? Yes, yes, yeah, it is a personalised view, and they don't, you don't understand that, you don't understand what you don't understand. I had somebody the other day saying, "Why do we not say it's a perfect holiday home?" And I said, "Okay, so you're you're alienate everybody that's looking to buy it for a family home because they'll believe, then they'll start to think, okay, there's holiday homes in that area, so why do we want to stay in there with other people? Yeah. It'll be a perfect Airbnb. Oh my God, that means there's because it's perfect Airbnb. There's Airbnbs over the road." Okay, so if I mention people coming and going, Airbnbs on the road, I don't want to stay there because there'll be Airbnbs that will be changed over all the time. Yeah. It's like you alienate a family, which is ninety nine percent of your audience, more than likely. Yeah. Um. I, so that you you know you kind of keep it nice and generic, but you kind of keep it quite emotive, so people yes. will respond from further afield. You know, we know the, the big cities get that, so that's the, probably the most important thing. So that's the best advice I can give someone. Um, yeah. For that. anyway, guys, let's wrap up here. Yeah. So for me, the, my last piece would be 
keep it fresh, keep it clean, keep it bright, keep it, keep it airy, make sure your agent knows what they need to know about the house. Yeah. I'm going to eat. Yep, for me, it's that communication. If you're on holiday, you need to be able to be contacted. For you know, you're not gonna not know that you've had an offer. You know, all these important things you Perfect. need to know. Andrea, you're panicking because we're coming up to the yeah, I know. <laughs> Leave it. <laughs> quick, quick, quick. Leave it to the experts. Perfect. That's it. And that's us, guys. Thank you very much for taking part in the show, guys. And uh, until next time, that's us. I've got enough fingers to do this. Uh, yeah. <laughs>